Thank you, Lord. I think they're really useful 
but when you read all that, somebody's going down to Vancouver um, to receive medical services that they make this afford. Whether it's culture support or if it's just a friendly visitor, um, anything, we really would like to hear before they come down so we can make sure that their rights and their access to services is available. So that, that's really big for us. Um, I also will put out, and I have one of these, it's, it's the Aboriginal Health Programs, and I'm going to put them at the back um, so that people can pick them up. We'll give us your, we'll give us, give you our phone numbers and uh, so how to contact it and how we can actually partner with you um, when you're sending families and friends out. So I hope you should get started here quickly. Um, Sorry, we had no electronic clickers and that's not close enough for me. Um, so basically, when we're looking at our program, our program has been around for, like I said, 16, 17 years now. And a lot of people don't realize we're there. We're a provincial program, we travel in, and we actually have our budget for travel. So the communities that are calling to ask for our services and our support, please be aware that we do pay for all the travel. We're, we're kind of blessed in that world. So it, when I speak up, it sounds really loud to me here. So, oh, is it loud? Okay, sorry. Okay, I see. That. I'll watch you up there. Okay. Um, so, what we really needed to do is um, identify a mission for um, a program. And this, this mission was developed by our advisory um, committee, the Aboriginal Women's Advisory Committee. And actually, they consist of women um, throughout the province. So in different regions, we have different representatives. And we bring them down three times a year to really provide us some direction. And actually, in the north up here, um, Heather Stevenson uh, from the Minister Valley is one of the reps. And we are definitely, and um, I'm just trying to remember, uh, there's another one from the north. I can't think of it right now off the top of my head, but it's generally made up of eight women around the province. So we're, we're getting a diverse um, uh, feedback from the community. But our mission is about promoting pathways, new, oh, sorry, old and new, to help and healing for Aboriginal women and girls and families. And it's really important that we put that old and new in there because we we um, we have so many rich um, uh, traditions right now that um, we don't want to lose sight of that. So those are really important. We're not trying to change the way we do services. We're trying to just make it easier and more accessible. So, so of course our mandate, as I had mentioned, we have actually two mandates. We have an outreach mandate and we have a um, in 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 house service mandate. So our average patient liaisons actually work at um, on site. Um, so they they are there for for families. And we've um, implemented a few um, uh, projects along the way. We call them aunties and uncles, a volunteer program um, in the hospitals. So we're really trying to promote that right now. And I know it's tough for. Um, Aboriginal people to donate or find time to volunteer within the hospital, but we have so many families that when they come down, they're very isolated um, uh, from their, their communities, and we have so many children that are in the hospital that are in between foster care and going home that don't have any visitors, so we're really trying to promote uh, Aboriginal volunteers to come in. Um, to the hospital. And it also helps make us have that presence, that awareness that Aboriginal people are there um, to help. Um, and then our outreach service, I, as Morgan mentioned, we do well known clients around the province, and that the last slide of this will show you a lot of the communities we've already worked with. And um, though our focus was originally in the development of women's was to do um, cervical screening, clinical breast exams, um, and talk about women's health. There's a lot more that actually goes on in these clinics. Um, there's disclosures, there's, you know, um, 
connecting with them to resources uh, within their communities and sometimes externally because some of these women are sharing with us that they don't feel safe um, with the resources that are close to them. So it's about working with that, the woman and where she's at, not where we want her to be at. Um, so that's our invitation. Uh, we do six clinics a year. We pay for all our nurse practitioners to come out um, and we do the follow-up. Um, we also work with the local physicians so that we don't feel that like, they don't feel that we're coming in and providing service and moving. So there's a lot of collaboration uh, going on when we, when we open that invitation to the community. Um, so that's our so um, someone's kind of looking here. So this just kind of tells you how we did that. Um, we'll go to the next one. We're also part um, try to participate in research and various um, projects. Um, we've done a number of uh, women's violence projects, women and men's violence projects. Um, Tracy had mentioned earlier, my predecessor actually um, worked with um, some of the early uh, Aboriginal organizations, Pacific Women's Association. Uh, so we, we funded, uh, we supported the funding, you know, as, as other people support funding in collaboration to get uh, projects running. Um, we also did recently a youth violence project through uh, Urban Native Youth that um, I showed yesterday. And it, it was just launched, so it's, it's relatively new, and it's about an anti violence. And we, we, so we want to throw that out to the community, that we want to partner with, with you. Sometimes it's easier that when we're in a position where we can get funding, but it's actually hard to get that funding out to the community and working with different organizations. So if anybody's got any ideas of any projects on kind of sitting on the sideline and wants to talk to me, come and talk to me and then we can talk about how we can, you know, make that reality. Yeah. And then there's two more, I think. So this map just kind of shows you that the commercial work that we do, these are communities that we get into. Um, another part of our program is that we um, we have a $10,000 grant each year that um, we move around into different regions to for communities to host women's conferences. And um, our, this year's successful um, community was actually uh, was Carrie Sakani, and uh, they hosted the, the Women's and Women's Conference just recently. Um, so we provided some of the funding and for that to happen. And uh, we have one that actually is the Sandwich Women's Group in Lower, um, uh, Lower uh, Vancouver Island that's going to be going next, you know, 2011, 2012. But we want to actually just for you to be aware that, you know, there, there are these small pots of fundings out there to really promote women's wellness because the issues are strong, but we also need to um, promote the healthy. Um, uh, activities that are actually happening. Um, so I want to leave it there. Um, so if anyone has any questions or uh, needs to talk to me, you can find me. You know, I'll be ordering around today. I know I didn't want to take up too much time, but I just wanted to show you, that, you know, where we have the pictures for as well. So thank you.